Garrett, does that mean you're going to go You're looking for people to talk to while I'm talking. Please. <laughs> uh, this is Garrett Brown, whose uh, various crimes you will admit to. So uh, it's great to see everybody. I hope that uh, maybe maybe we're not that many. It'd be great to, to actually have everybody just stand and introduce themselves at some point. And because uh, one of the things when I think about uh, uh, Ben is I think about what inspired Ben to go to Nicaragua in the first place. What inspired the rest of us to go to Nicaragua, and what we brought uh, back from Nicaragua, which was the Nicaraguan Revolution, and all the Nicaraguans that fought and died uh, for years and years, and a lot of people who fought and bravely in, in all kinds of non-military ways to keep the Nicaraguan Revolution alive. That's why Ben was there, that's why Don and I and Shelley and everybody else in this room was either working on projects in Nicaragua or working on projects outside of Nicaragua. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that one of the things that's uh, important is that that inspiration uh, is carried on in everybody's lives. That's why it'd be interesting, at least to me, to find out what people look like, because I recognize some faces but not the names, and what people have been doing for the last 25 years, because that's the most telling uh, memory and dedication we've given to Nicaragua, to Ben's uh, memory, which was you know, our country's drop of blood in a sea of blood that was done by the U.S. government, uh, in not only in Nicaragua, but throughout Central America. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things I remember about Ben's death, I was in Esteli, I lived in Nicaragua from 84 to 88, um, and so I was in Esteli when he died, he was murdered. Um, and, and so the response of the Nicaraguans was very similar to what the response was for the thousands of other Nicaraguans who had been killed. It's, and that uh, the year before, or six months before, the Contra had killed uh, 10 telcor workers. These were uh, telephone workers, shot the hell out of them in the back of a pickup truck uh, by a San Juan de Limay. And all of them were from Esteli, and so it was a really shocking uh, set of massacres, and one massacre in Esteli. But the response was always, okay, these guys, the Contra, are not going to win. We're going to figure out who's going to take the place, who's going to do the work of the people that got killed. And that's what Nicaraguans did everywhere uh, in, the, in the country during the revolution. So my response when Ben was, uh, ben was killed was to try and figure out, okay, I got to adopt a, a, a Nicaraguan response here. How can I, me, do something to replace Ben and, and the work that he was doing? And when I came back in the United, uh, to the United States in 88, I knew I was not going to end up being a mechanical engineer. I uh, way beyond. But I had an interest in, in, in occupational workplace uh, safety and health, workplace health and safety. So I went as, you know, Ben might have went to graduate school here at Berkeley and got a master's degree in industrial hygiene, which is actually workers' health and safety, not brushing workers' teeth. Uh, and that's what I've been doing for the last 25 years, is uh, my contribution to trying to make up for the murder of Ben Linder was to become an engineer of sorts, working on occupational safety and health in the United States, and I've been doing that uh, internationally as well through a little NGO that I, I helped set up. So uh, it would be wonderful to hear other stories, frankly, from everybody in this room uh, about uh, you know, what they've done in the last 25 years because that, I'm sure, is inspired not only by Ben, but also inspired by the Nicaraguans uh, and the Salvadorans and the Guatemalans and everybody else who's been fighting in that part of the world for freedom. So I hope to hear from other people as well. Thanks. Thank you, Gary. Um, Nancy asked me to sure, Julie, come on. Uh, Nancy asked me to just tell the people that have arrived uh, at the show what's going on that we are going to have this open mic time and then one more after we show the film. And we just really like people to stand up and talk. And yeah, please give your names and please tell us, you know, what you've been doing. Um, I'll lay my cards on the table. I went to Nicaragua as a communist militant from Montreal. I had been part of the communist youth movement, uh, mostly Trotskyist oriented, and we did things like the Metro Strike of 1970. I'm getting old. And, uh, you know, my first political activity was to go on strike because they raised the Metro fees to 50 cents. Not buy 50 cents, 250 cents. And uh, 
in Nicaragua, I was, you know, definitely a supporter of the revolution. The revolution, as Garrett said, you know, there was a revolution and there was the war. The war wasn't always the revolution, though it usually was. And the revolution was all to other things. For me, it was training people how to repair machines more than anything else. For me, the revolution was that farmers and workers, rural workers, could learn how to use mixed numbers and make machine parts. And, uh, and that revolution was tougher sometimes than the war. But the war was strong, and the war was something that we should never forget. And frankly, we as Americans should never forgive when the people who perpetrated these crimes are walking around our government, when William Walker is considered some kind of human rights ambassador to Kosovo, right? When General Poindexter is considered some kind of analyst, right? When Elliot Abrams is considered a senior statesman. We know. We are the witnesses. And I think one of the things that we should bring into the 21st century is our uh, rejection of what they did during the 20th. I like to tell my friends that I was a communist when I went to Nicaragua. I was sort of a former communist when I got back from Nicaragua. And in the 21st century, all things given, I'm an unrepentant former communist at this point. <laughs> I don't see what they're doing better, and frankly, I stand with Occupy. I'm also a Green Party activist. I'm running for the first district, in case anybody wants to vote for the Green Party in the first district. What's your name? Don McClay. And, um, and I think we all should be doing something, not for them, not for ourselves, but for the good common sense that we all have, right? Because all the children are all of our children. And we have to think of the future we give to them.